there are a lot of vloggers, but there is one that stands out to me. His name is Henry Belcaster. His vlogs are amazing, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing him today. So, Henry, tell us about yourself. Nico, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks for the kind words. I don't know how I became your favorite vlogger, but I'll take it. Who the heck am I? I, uh, so Nico, I grew up outside Chicago. You might hear a really loud train going by right now. Um, I went to school, Luckily school in the suburbs. Luckily there's no, no sound. Okay, good, good. That's why we get the, we get the good gear. Um, exactly. but I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, went to school out there, uh, high school. And then I went to college out on the East coast. That's where I met your brother of all mm -hmm. people. Um, Mr. Valentine. And uh, so I, we both went to Brown and I studied astrophysics. Um, and much like you, or, or so it seems, I've always kind of had these entrepreneurial ideas and tendencies and just desire mm -hmm. to build things and create things and help people. Um, so now after leaving Brown a, a year or two ago, uh, I've started a couple of things, a couple haven't panned out. And I'm now building a, a media agency with one of my really good friends. And we specialize in making animated clips for social media, mostly Twitter. That's great. I don't know how you go from astrophysics to like vlogging and like a social media company. I think, um, well, one, I want to know how you, why you turned to, to podcasting of all things. But I think for me, with all how difficult and stressful college was, um, how difficult and stressful physics was, it was always music or photography wow. or videography that remained that kind of creative outlet to, to keep me sane, you know? Um, so yeah, there's always been like this interest in doing really deep, hard schoolwork, but then also relishing in the like creative arts to, to, kind of keep my mind working yeah um so do you know how I started YouTube and podcasting or yeah like why for you as I think there are some entrepreneurial things going on behind <laughs> um uh, your head maybe not but um why do you do YouTube or or podcasting um podcasting is because I've, I'm a very talkative person um and I saw one of my friends, um, he actually doesn't know he's the reason I'm doing podcasting. He has no clue. Um, I haven't told him yet, but <laughs> um, he actually interviewed a professional retired Mexican soccer player. And I was like, I can do that. Seems fun. So I, I interviewed like Valentin, um, another one of Valentin's friends and Cliff. Um, that's basically where I started. Then I just reached out to tons of people and yeah. That's so cool. And if and you're then, not, podcasting sorry to like totally take this over and make it my uh -huh. podcast but I want to know <laughs> about you because if you're not podcasting what are you most interested in maybe in school or um it's like not counting YouTube mm -hmm. <laughs> YouTube could be a close second all right so what's um, in third place so either like music or coding okay following One of Valentine's footsteps perhaps <laughs> yeah very cool well i do know that if you can code you can do anything in this world so yes um keep it keep it that that's very cool i'm not like the best quarter i, I know like the basics which is like the important stuff the frameworks right and then yeah just having an idea of how these things work will allow you to uh continue developing those skills i have no idea the basics so <laughs> Um, I feel lost when it comes to software. That's definitely a, a good skill to have. I mostly learn from like YouTube videos and just like ignoring Valentin, like I do this. <laughs> um, awesome. um, don't worry that you're like, if you're kind of making your podcast, like you also ask questions. Are you like, <laughs> there's only been two podcasts where like, there's like the guests also ask questions and that podcast is really fun. So you can also ask questions. Awesome. So who was your inspiration for YouTube? Oh man. Um, my inspiration for YouTube. And if you see people are kicking it around the comments, that's probably because I've forced them to by copying him so much. Um, it's mostly Casey Neistat. Yeah. Uh, right. Casey Neistat with a, a heavy dose of Adam Savage from Mythbusters. 
So like if you watch my videos or you look around the shop, the way I organize things is very much Adam Savage. The way I create quick videos is very much Casey Neistat. And if I'm going to go a little bit more cinematic on things, then a lot of that inspiration comes from Peter McKinnon. And uh, it's funny because you'll get half the people are like, dude, this is awesome. I, you know, Casey's not making videos anymore. Thank you for bringing back this kind of nostalgia. Like you're the next Casey Neistat. That's great. Yeah. And then you've got the group of people that are like, well, you're just copying Casey Neistat or Nico. You're just, you know, you're, you're copying whoever, Mr. Joe Beast Rogan. or uh, Joe Rogan. Sure. Yeah. It, for podcasting. I was thinking about your Minecraft stuff. Um, <laughs> I don't do that much. Sure. Anyways, <laughs> right. I used to a lot. Um, right, right, right. And I think, I think it takes as an artist, it takes a heavy dose of copying to learn new things to then apply your own spin to. So when I'm filming, I'm like, yes, this is very Casey Neistat E, but if I do this, this, and this, well, it makes it Henry, right? Uh, Casey Neistat wasn't talking about finances or today I'm explaining how I get custom tailored suits. Like that wasn't his vibe. Or books. Um, or books for that matter, right? Like a lot of what I talk about is just books I'm reading and I still owe you one um, building a story brand. Um, but, um, I have it on Audible. Yes. Have you started it? Um, no, because I'm reading another one about YouTube first that I'm going to read okay. that, the, the okay. story brand. Okay. Um, well, anyway, those, those are my major inspirations. And um, to, to, to that end, you know, oh, there's this great quote. It's um, good artists copy, great artists steal right? And I think if I'm going to be a great artist, I might as well just steal the format that Casey Neistat used because it worked and it worked really well. Yes. Um, and then you can just apply your own voice to it, right? You can watch all the Joe Rogan in the world, get stoked about how he interviews people. But then at the end of the day, only Nico is going to ask the questions that you're going to ask, right? Yeah. And I feel like if something works, you also might as well just try it. Um, so yeah. Why not, right? <laughs> Why not? I think too, a lot of my tattoos come from, I've got a few now. They're really just reminders. You know, film is there. Live is on my arm, reminding myself to like get outside and live. Mm -hmm. A lot of that comes from Casey as well. It's just like very much like, this is what I was feeling on this date. Let me remember it forever. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely owe a lot to him. Yeah, and I feel like everyone has like, try to make a Casey Neistat like style vlog, you know, um, I've tried to make ones, but put, don't turn out anywhere uh, like <laughs> good. Um, but yeah, he's the king of vlogging, right? It's exactly. Like, he basically made vlogging, basically. He made vlogging. He's the reason so many of us even started um, mm -hmm. setting up a camera on a tripod, walking out the door, walking back in to get the shot of yourself. Um, but while he did invent those things, if you really dig deep enough, what you'll find is he actually took a lot of those uh, filmmaking techniques from his brother, Van. So Casey was copying Van. And Van Neistat took a lot of those filmmaking techniques from this artist they worked for, Tom Sachs. So these things just keep progressing. And, you know, you take a piece of what you like, you know, smash it with something else. Take a little bit of Casey, smash it with Peter McKinnon. Yeah. And then new things are born. Yeah. And like, like you mentioned, he created like the, he made the tripod and like the huge, like microphone thing here, like popular and everything. But yeah. That's right. So too, like, you know, everyone's got their gorilla pod and, uh, um, uh, road microphone on their camera. Right. And like, <laughs> I take that inspiration, but instead I get this little thing, Casey didn't do that. And I find something that works for me, you know, in this mm -hmm. little vlogging camera. And you just quickly start to um, find your own voice. And it took me a while. If you go back and watch my stuff from a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, it's like, it was kind of this different voice and different character I was playing. It's only in the last yeah. two weeks or so that this ever-changing voice, I really feel like I start to figure out my format, my own format. Yeah, I feel like it's always good to have like your own format. Um, yeah, that's just my personal opinion. 
um, while we're in the topic of YouTube, you did daily vlogs for a long time. Um, why did you decide to do daily vlogs? This is true. Um, I really started doing the daily vlogs for, for myself. I was like, okay, I graduated school. I have no plans of working for anyone. I've got all these ideas I want to build. Um, I've surrounded myself with cameras and camera gear. I was photographing weddings and uh, filming periodic vlogs. But my thought was like, I've got all these resources. I've got this workshop, which is my set. I think it would be a missed opportunity if I didn't document that for myself as a diary entry, right? So it was very much like growing up, I, I felt like no one really understood me. No one understood me. No one understood all these aspirations I had and all these things I wanted to build. Um, very few teachers understood it. My parents didn't really understand it. My dad more so, but not quite. And um, I felt like at that age, so I didn't start watching someone like Casey Neistat until I was in college. So maybe 18. So I'm like, I was watching it when I was like seven. <laughs> right. Because YouTube was around, you know, we didn't have YouTube until, yeah, I don't know. I was maybe 10, 11, 12. And then it was just really early YouTube. It wasn't any of this kind of vlogging stuff. So my point being, I didn't have any of these kind of like vloggers to look up to in terms of watching someone do these hard things online transparently. And so in addition to it being kind of a daily diary for myself, it was like, maybe I can help someone like you, Nico, who's seven at the time or 10 or 15, help show you that like, you don't just have to go to college and go to grad school and become a doctor, um, but you can also be a little bit crazy and try different things and follow your passion. And if I can kind of pay that back in a place like YouTube where these videos will live forever, great. You know, um, they'll just keep serving their purpose no matter how many people are watching. Yeah, I feel like that, that is very true. Um, so what, when you're doing like daily vlogs, you have to come up like with topics for each one. How did you like keep coming up with like topics like for each one? And how did you ever keep up with it? Well, didn't you didn't you elect to weren't you gonna daily vlog like last week? I did, uh, but it it wasn't like vlogs. It because it was more so I really like planned daily. out like the videos. Um, and most of them are gonna be like clips of the podcast. Um, but then they just stopped because I I have a school trip like tomorrow. Um, then I'm leaving like I have to pack today. I have to be back. Um. <laughs> I have like, I had two podcasts yesterday. I have one today. I couldn't do it, but yeah, but, but I did do it for like four days, but you mad, yeah. man. That's so exciting. Um, kudos to you for doing all these hard things while going to school <laughs> and needing to pack and go on trips. Thank you. Um, remind me your question because it was really, really good. And I'm sorry, I lost track. How did you keep on coming up yes. with topics? Yes. <laughs> See, I was thinking about trying to come up with a topic. It's hard. It's really hard. It is. And um, I think it also seems impossible. So when, when I started the daily vlog, first of all, this is when I kept writing film on my hand to remind myself that, wait a minute, you can film some really, really, really mundane thing. And if you edit it properly, you can turn anything into a story. I turned, you know, maybe it was easier because it's kind of funny, but I turned like or Ken, my editor rather, turned picking up my dog's uh, poop on the sidewalk with a bathing suit. You, you can turn that into a story, right? And it wasn't yeah. particularly exciting when it <laughs> happened. Um, so it's really difficult. And for those like early days of the vlog, it was like, oh, how do I drag myself out of bed? Like quickly script something in the notes app on my phone, come up with all the shots in my head, carry that plot line throughout the day. That's a video idea. All, right. Sure. Right. There you go. Um, look, right. So this, like me just thinking out loud, if you have this video creation mindset, boom, we could, we could write that video. No problem on exactly. how to come up with a vlog or how to script it. Um, but as the days went on and now we're on like, I don't know, the 70th episode of this kind of daily vlog, um, two things happened. One, it got a lot easier to just film whatever I'm doing and figure out the story in post-production or just mm -hmm. get
get on with the day, get out of bed, start, and midday, something's going to happen that I can turn into a story. Um, so that, that's basically what it came, came down to. I forget the second thing that's happening. Um, but yeah, it's mostly just start, 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 go before you're ready and then fix it in post. That's like the joke in, in kind of the industry. Mm -hmm. Everyone's always saying, fix it in post. Yeah. Well, you can also create stories in post. And, uh, mm -hmm. I owe a lot of that to my, my editor, who's incredibly talented, incredibly talented. Yeah. And I feel like Ken helped a lot because like, you don't only have like YouTube, you had like some other things like the days vlog, you're like doing dumb bar, like your fart nonsense. So um, Ken is in a totally different time zone, right? So how did you guys figure that out? Yeah, so that's actually, Ken was editing my videos for a while and I was making like weekly or a couple or three a week videos. And then we realized because, so Ken's um, editing, he's in the Philippines and that's 13 hours ahead of me. So in making those videos, we realized like, wait a minute, there's an amazing opportunity here to take advantage of those time zones, not treat them as confusing or difficult to coordinate. But yeah. instead, right after this podcast, Nico, I can upload my footage from today. It's 3, 4 a.m. in the Philippines. Ken will wake up in a couple hours. All that footage will be on his computer. I'm going to go to bed this evening. And when I wake up, Ken's taking care of it and it's on YouTube. So... In that sense, like, yeah, it's, it's difficult to coordinate at the beginning. Once you get it up and running, it's this amazing, amazing thing where Ken and I, as a duo, can kind of be this, like, 24-7 beast. Yeah. And the good thing is I only shoot for, you know, 30 minutes a day, even though the story's running through my head. Like, it's kind of crazy. Wow. Right? The, it's, it's constantly running through my head, so it's all day long. Um, and then Ken edits for maybe four or five hours. Uh, and neither of us has to do both of those things, which I don't understand how Casey did it. Casey Neistat did it for so long. Yeah. Um, but it was in his entire life. And so this system actually works really well where Ken has a whole lot of freedom to do whatever he wants. And I don't have to do all the editing. So I have a lot of freedom in the evenings to kind of do all the things I miss during the day. Yeah. And people like in another blog who did daily for a while until like something came up um roman atwood i'm not sure if you know him um but he has like 10 million subscribers and he did like daily vlogs from just vlogging like his family like um and his daily vlogs were like he would vlog until like 4 p.m and 4 p.m all the way to like night he'll edit and then he'll upload at like in the morning and then do it all again Exactly. For and like try and come up with a story the next year. day and try to do all your work during the day and go to school and, and mm -hmm. go to meetings. It's that's nearly impossible. So, the, you know, those guys for, for paving the way like that is really, really inspiring. Yeah. I also feel like different niches have it like easier because I noticed like it's so easy to do daily Minecraft videos. So easy. Like I did daily gaming. Minecraft videos. Yeah, gaming especially. Like well, the opinion. gaming ones write the story for you, right? You just exactly. play your game. You're either really good or really not. Uh, maybe you have the personality like, uh, what was his name? It wasn't Ninja. I think it started with an M. He was playing um, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, but you could have the personality if you're not particularly good at the game. And you could sell it that way. But yeah, the story, the story writes itself in that you can just record your screen, record you streaming, and um, you have all the content there. It's in the gameplay. Yeah. That's a really, really good place to be. And sometimes they just play and talk over it, like about their day, like what they did in the day. And then like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so another good thing, like for viewers is, you can come into, let's say they're live streaming on Twitch or whatever. You can come into that stream at any point and know exactly what's going on in the gameplay versus something like Clubhouse, the app, where you could come into a live um, interview or recording and have no idea what's going yeah. on because you missed the first half. So gaming is like the place to be. I think if I did it all again, I'd, I'd probably be a gamer. There's like this one two people i can think of that are getting crazy like views um there's this youtuber from spain who has like the record for most people watching him i don't watch him but all my friends do 
I think it was like the graph or something. Um, and he had like 1 million people watching him play Fortnite, which was crazy. Um, and then this other YouTuber, his name is Tommy in it. Um, he's like 16. And he had like 500 people watching him walk around in Minecraft and knowing his friends, which is like crazy. And well, it's amazing. Yeah, like... Under a year ago, he had 100,000 subscribers. Now he's about to hit 10 million subscribers. Craziness. And like, crazy. I, I have a question, Nico. Um, are all of your friends content creators to some extent? Does everyone your age kind of make YouTube videos or make TikToks or game? No, there's only one I can think of who is not in like my grade. Um, he's in the grade one higher than me. And he does Fortnite videos, but yeah, that's the only one I can think of. Uh, and other ones, some of them, well, actually, there's this one girl that kind of like got like a viral TikTok. So kind of like those two are, are the only ones that I can think of, but the other ones have their TikToks private. So I don't think that counts as like right. content creation, right. but yeah. Okay. Because you all grew up with it. Like you totally understand it. All of them My watch it. People. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Of course. I bet most you them, default. Do you most watch, of them don't YouTube? watch YouTube? Most of them don't watch YouTube, which is what do they watch? Like weird. TikTok. <laughs> oh, TikTok. And Netflix. Sure. So it, they probably go to TikTok and YouTube before watching TV. Is that the case? Yes. Yes. Or maybe Netflix. Okay. That's yeah. so interesting. That's so interesting. Yeah. Or maybe now, like, Twitch is also like a second, third one. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Things are changing. I know. <laughs> music is changing because of TikTok, mm -hmm. right? Everyone wants to just hear the hook dance. that's in the dance, just yeah. the hook. And then I want to go to YouTube and learn just what that hook was. So it's exciting and it's totally different. Very cool. And now there's like people that do podcasting. Um, I've noticed like, I thought it was really hard to get guests. But then I noticed how like easy it is like to reach out to the people um, like find finding new people like just going on, on your like tiktok for you page and like or like youtube like home page and you'll find 10 new people that you can reach out to and then you'll realize your brother knows someone and then and you interview them it's just so easy it's brilliant yeah it's never been easier um when you i was your it. age i mean we would have had to find someone's email maybe and that's not that easy it's not that quick who knows if they even now it is very quick now it is right so even like dylan and i who are, who are working together everyone we're talking to it's on twitter it's all on twitter they want quick ask me the question give me the answer right away what do you want i want you on my podcast great let's do it but it's got to happen on twitter not email um so yeah if you can you're already using those tools which is amazing but for a lot of people you need to start using these like quick medium TikTok, Twitter, um, it's it's so powerful. Yeah. Um, now that you kind of like mentioned your podcast, um, why do you why in your podcast, why is it only like you and Dylan sometimes? Why don't you like invite guests over? Is there a reason for that? Yeah. Um, the reason isn't a very good one. It's mostly we we just haven't figured out our format yet. So like we were talking about earlier, you know, Joe Rogan is the best at doing that kind of interview him and Tim Ferriss. Like they're going to have a famous guest on, they're going to interview them and get their life story. Um, you're probably doing a similar thing, but from a completely different mindset because of your age. So it works. Now, Dylan and I are in between you and Joe Rogan or Tim Ferriss. And yeah. we're like, what are we supposed to do here? Right? Yes. We could probably get these guests and yes, we could probably get them to share our stuff so that we could grow faster but we don't think we'd be doing anything new for our audience. And we haven't recorded in a while, so we're, we still need to figure out that format that like really sets us apart. Um, but that's mostly why. I think when we do have guests, they're usually people... So the podcast is called Smart Nonsense. And I think what we do best is... <laughs> right, right here. I think what we do best is taking really kind of hard to understand comp complex ideas like what we learned in school or in textbooks and distilling them down into jokes or nonsense or funniness 
Um, so when we do have guests, those are the kind of guests we look for. Um, particularly like, well, we should have your brother on at some point. I think we want to. Um, but uh, also people that we went to school with that could do a similar thing. It's like, we went to this really good school. We know all these hard things. Can we joke about them and make it so easy that a three-year-old could understand what we're talking about? And I think a lot of the big time guests that you're getting would come on and they'd be too serious for us. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're, again, we're, we're, we're trying to find that format, but it's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. Um, some of them are like very serious. Some of them just like, I'm surprised they're not as serious. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, you, you get surprised by people that you, you think are serious but aren't serious and the ones you think aren't serious are serious. So it's just crazy. I guess that's how the world works. You don't know what anybody's going to be until yeah. you do. Because mostly, um, sometimes you're putting like a, a fake persona on the internet. Um, and, and people like Yes Theory, Eric Tabach, like they don't have that fake persona. When mm -hmm. I interviewed them, they're exactly like the one in the videos. So and people like that are still great to like interview. Totally. And and frankly, like if you watch my videos, it's 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 like Henry Belcaster plus 10% character, energy, coffee guy, you know? And that's not entirely truthful, but getting back to this point, like how do you come up with stories? How do you know what to film? It's a daily blog. Part of that is like the mundane is really mundane. So if anyone's gonna watch me do anything, at least I can try and be entertaining or at least try and bring the personality to these mundane things. And that's what I do. Now, for, for something like Amar on, on Yes Theory, it's like, yeah, he's just this really charming, nice, down-to-earth person in the videos. I'm sure that's exactly how he is mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Um, I think you just don't want to go too far. You know, like if, if I was 200% hyped up in the videos and I was a Debbie Downer in real life, it wouldn't make any sense at all, right? Like the things I'm saying are true. Exactly. They're just plus 10%, you know? Mm -hmm. there, there are some people um there's one person I interviewed who who is like crazy in his videos but like in the interview was like very like chill like calm and I was like surprised by that <laughs> <laughs> a lot of that happens in the edit too you know yeah it's like what gets edited out is a lot of my like ah I said the wrong thing ah you know where's my camera where's my yeah. you know it's like uh we edit it into this really polished thing but behind the camera, I'm just like, sometimes I'm just dragging my feet. Uh, today, I'm like, where? it's it's 3 p.m. I'm kind of lost in the story today. Uh, the, this thing I had planned in my head didn't quite work out this morning. Uh, and then you're going to see the video come out tomorrow. It's going to look like this beautiful highlight. And it's important to know, especially uh, like kids, my sister's age, who's three years younger than me and yours and mine, is that the internet's a little bit fake in that sense. And I think a lot of people can get caught up in this narrative that's like, oh, look at Nico, you know, he's having so much fun on the internet. Look at Henry, he's crazy on YouTube. Why is he so happy? They don't see and the behind the scenes. Exactly. They're not gonna see you when we log off this interview. Uh, you're not gonna see me <laughs> in the stuff that doesn't get edited out because it's not entertaining. So yeah. you have to take these things with, with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, I haven't recently noticed like how, like every time I show on my podcast is like, when the, I've been editing for much longer because before I was always edit for like two hours or like one hour, 30 minutes. Now with the podcast, I normally have one hour of footage. So I have to like watch it, just like watch it again while editing it. And but yeah, like you started Smart Nonsense because like from what you said was like, you wanted to explain things that were hard, um, but like that, that can a three-year-old understand it. Was that the reason or is there another reason why? No, that was the reason is um, I think both Dylan and I felt like, okay, we've kind of seen a lot of different spectrums in this world. We've traveled a lot. We've gone to this really good school. Um, we've spent our fair share of time sleeping on floors and, and not knowing where we're going to sleep one night. And what we found is a lot of people in the world take themselves too seriously. A lot of our peers take themselves too seriously. A lot of people in the workforce take themselves too seriously and we're like if nobody else is going to tell people that you can be silly 
work hard, work hard, but be silly um, and make it in the world, then hopefully we can be that, that guide, you know, especially to our, so many of our peers that are just so caught up in the rat race that again, you have to go to a good school. You have to get good grades. You don't have time to see your friends. You've got to go to med school. You've got to go to law school. Um, and then what? Then you turn 30, 35, 40 years old. And you're like, wait a minute. I never took a step back and questioned why I was doing the things I'm doing. And so Dylan and I took before starting this podcast, we had been out of school for like six months, maybe a year, and just taken the time to be like, why are we trying? Why are we doing the things we're doing? Why are we trying to achieve this thing or start this thing? Why? Just why? Just ask why. Um, one friend that came on our podcast once said like, people spend more time programming and figuring out their, their, their gun class in Call of Duty than they do trying to actually ask why they're working at the place they're working, you know? Yeah. Um, so we're like, let's just ask why more about the world than we do in video games. Because if we can do it in video games, we should probably be doing it in the stuff that like really matters in life. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I feel, yeah, that was very true. Like I, I've also been noticing sometimes I'm like trying like so hard to like do something like a game or like finding uh, like a thing in Photoshop that I normally don't do for like some other things I should be spending that energy for, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Totally. Totally. Um, but yeah, we just, I think you, you, you've already got it in that, like you're going out of your comfort zone. Maybe it's your comfort zone. It sounds like you just like talking to people, but, um, you're doing this thing that so many people would say want somebody do, your age can't do, right? Exactly. So many people want to do two yeah. people, right? There's a bunch of people that say you can't do that because you're this old. And then there's a bunch of people that say, I wish I did that, but now I can't because I'm 50, which isn't true, right? That you still do that didn't already, exactly. And if you didn't already do something, then the next best time to start doing it is tomorrow. And that's totally okay. Um, but yeah, we just want people to be goofier. That's, that's mm -hmm. really it. We're like, people are fun. Life is fun. Um, it's this amazing rare thing that we've been given the privilege to have let's goof off because it, it's really too short to wear horse blinders and just be head down for 40 years. Yeah. That's why I also want to start like another like talk show or podcast with one of my friends um, who just is really funny and is like, we, we vibe very well. So I think that podcast would be very funny um, because this podcast is more like serious. I feel mm -hmm. like and having the other one would be like, also very cool. Is Which, this your, I, I really is, want to start that. Is this your friend who also creates already, or would you have to convince them? No, um, he he doesn't do videos already. He did, um, like a couple of years ago when I was doing it at the same time, but it just stopped. He wants to do it again, but when he's a little bit older, and I'm like, no, do it now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do it, but yeah, now. But yeah, okay, he you could tell him too that I said do it now. Exactly. I will. Um, yeah. <laughs> he's in a lot of my videos. He's like willing to help me with my videos. Um, and I, I, I already mentioned the talk show with him and he was like, yes, I really want to do that with you. But yeah, so I really want to start that with okay, him. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Start it. Um, nobody has to be watching. You already know that Dylan and I knew mm -hmm. that we, we didn't create this thing for anyone to be watching. We created it. So we had something to look back on in 10 years time. If someday people start watching it because we cracked the code, Good. Great. We we filmed all these episodes. They're there. Go watch them. We call it the binge bank. You know, go binge our content when you're ready. Um, but we're gonna memorialize that stuff now because it's pretty much free to do. You know. Yeah. Yes, you have the gear, you have the headphones, the mic, the computer. Um, but most people do, and mm -hmm. this Zoom thing is free practically. So why would you not be recording these and sharing them? Yeah, and I also feel like something that kind of like adds on top of the like podcasting with one of your friends is because like you can look back in the future what you both were thinking at that time exactly like, well both of you were like thought process at like 12 years old or stuff like that and everything so yeah you know something cool that you should do i've got it uh, let me stop fidgeting with this card um 
I've got it uploaded and I got this from Mr. Beast. But when no one knew who Mr. Beast was, he filmed a diary yeah. entry, right? Uh -huh. And he scheduled it for five years um, to go public on in YouTube the mm -hmm. in the future. And I did the same thing this past July and I scheduled it to go live two years from now. And it's this time capsule that's just going to pop into the universe, I guess, next July. I've gone back and watched it once since. And it's like, wow. Um, it was my first mm -hmm. day in the studio. It didn't look like this. I didn't look like I do now. I wasn't talking like I talk now. It's, it's fascinating. Um, so just to see your, gro your own personal growth, it's, it's really cool. So maybe you should do a little time capsule video and schedule it for five years or, or 10 years. Yeah. And you'll be going off to college and be like, what the heck? It's crazy. <laughs> Um, I did like this one thing in Notion. Um, you're using Notion? Yes. <laughs> oh, you're going to rule the world. So I have like notes for future self. I have like, hello, 21 year old me. And then once a year. And you um, wrote like a letter? Yeah. It's just like talking about what I was doing at the time. Like how my podcast is going. It was my biggest guest like so far. Like you know, my biggest guest in a year. Just everything like that. I was going to do the video thing, but I just never done it but I will yeah right it's a little bit more work yeah um no that's great I remember the kind of old school way of doing this was I think in sixth grade they made us write a letter to our eighth grade self and they collected them all and kept them and they gave them to us two years later and I remember that being like this wow moment where it was like who was that person in sixth grade who am I now okay this is great or you know I grew out of these things great Oh, but I was also doing this at that time. And I, I kind of miss being that type of person. So let me go, go back in time a little bit and, and bring some of those things back into the future. Um, now you're doing it on notion, which is amazing. Um, <laughs> you're, you're like a million steps ahead of, of me. Honestly, I just got on notion. Um, and I'm sure <laughs> anyone your age. Um, if you would ask kids from my school, what is notion? You would probably say the thing we use for school. Because it's a snap, it's called Notion, but with a K. Um, it's like with a, a whole school thing. Yeah. With it, a it, K? Yeah, it's like that. K Notion? K Notion. Yeah, it, it's called Notion. Um, if, if you ask what Notion was, don't then say that. Um, Is it the same as like Notion without the K? No, it, it's like a, the whole school system isn't is like that iPad. It's like... Um, I see. Notion. So it's probably like the education version of Notion, or maybe it's something completely I don't think different. I they made it. Um, but yeah, it, oh, it, I it's, see. It's basically like knowledge in action. Um, yeah, I see. But yeah, um, maybe this is uniquely Mexican. Maybe no, but that's that's kind of. I it's think not? there are also some school in the U.S. Okay, um, but but this is like when you guys are in school, this is what you use for maybe your e-learning or textbooks yeah or, but you're on um, real notion right exactly <laughs> because <laughs> when the teacher the first time i came to school they mentioned um we use notion i was like you guys use notion what oh uh, and then who, i saw oh it's not the real notion <laughs> that's very cool who taught you about notion or, or taught you how to use it um so one day like valentine um had like a there's like a notion pad or something and then he he got it for everyone in our family and yeah, Very but cool. it, mainly Valentine. I have no clue how he found it, but <laughs> he did, and he related exactly. to you. So that's that's very cool. Very cool. Um, and yeah, I, I don't remember you saying something about this. Um, but that like the best time to start is like now or tomorrow. Um, one of the reasons I want to do like a lot of these things when I'm this age is so when I'm older, I don't have to like worry about what I'm gonna do. So I already know what I like. So I can just like do it, if that makes sense. Yeah. And you're just going to test a bunch of things and do a bunch mm -hmm. of things and create a bunch of things. One of them will succeed. And, right. Sure. Definitely. Um, and through that, you're going to be like, oh, these eight things I did, not for me. Can't believe I did those. Whatever. No you can say you did that. Forward. You did it. You tried. Right. Um, but yeah, then there's going to be that that one or two or three things that, that really worked. And you just barrel through on on those mm -hmm. and you can only ever figure that out by trying a lot of things exactly um so i mean god you're way ahead 
but a lot of our peers too, mine, mine and Dylan is they just do a lot of what ifs this, what, what if I created that? Um, I have this idea, but I don't have the time because I'm working. Just do it. Just do it. I, I'd say too, like the best time to start isn't now. First of all, it's 10 years ago. Like you should just, just start before you were ready. 10 years ago, full stop. If not then, now, okay. If not now, don't be discouraged. Just start tomorrow. Um, basically, starting at some point is better than not doing anything at all, right? So I, you know, I, I fight this battle with my parents all the time. Um, I'm like, you know, you guys should have been doing this, this, or this the last 15 years. I think you would have been happier. Maybe not. That's me imposing my own beliefs on them. Um, if you haven't been doing them for the last 15 years, you can at least start next week and be better off than never doing them at all. So just start. I like people that take action and execute more than just talking about things. And yeah, uh, waste. I always hear people say like the best time is doing now or like 10 years ago. I feel like I start at the perfect time, like yeah. seven years ago. Um, so it's like I was young, but it was still a good time to start. Totally. Even though if I started right. 10 years ago, I should not have. I was two years old. So, <laughs> but yeah. From, right. From my point of view at 24, it was feasible to start 10 years ago. On your time scales, we're talking about like two years Five ago. years ago. Or like seven. Five years ago. Even better, you know, <laughs> even better. Wow. At seven? What were you doing at seven? Um, I started when I was five, actually. Five and a half. What, what were you doing at five and a half? Making YouTube videos. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and what, editing them on like iMovie or um there was this app called YouTube Capture an um, app you make me feel old we had like we had film tapes <laughs> I had to I had to figure out how to get like a fire wire it was called to go from these film tapes and convert them into a digital sorry this app um, I, I have like an, an iPod Touch, um, and there is an app called YouTube Capture, and you can add music and everything. Um, then like a year and a half later, um, I started to actually edit, um, which was on an app called ScreenFlow on the computer, and that was when I started doing gaming videos, and yeah, I've been editing since since then. That's and amazing. Doing YouTube. That's amazing. Cause yeah, I mean, five, ten years ago, not five years ago, you were doing doing it 10 years ago 15 years ago we had all these hardware barriers like yeah if you wanted to record yourself streaming a game you had to get this 400 hundred dollar piece of hardware to record the screen and like i said i had to get a fire yeah. wire to go from the camera to the computer now it's all software for you because mm -hmm. uh, there are cameras on it everything it's oh, so exciting and now like most of it is free like obs which is like the best one of the best screen recording is free um quick time is free Mm -hmm. iMovie is free so you can really start with free items and then while you yeah. start gaining revenue you can go ahead and buy right. all the different things right so you went to brown um and both valentine and cliff told me going to brown was like the best experience of their lives is that the same for you not for me no um and i think that's because I don't ever really think I needed to go to college in the first place. I should have, and I wish I took a gap year before going to college because I had all these dreams and aspirations. And again, things I wanted to build. I always knew what I wanted to be. And I always knew because I had early validation, like at your age and in high school, that if I tried hard enough, I could create anything and I could do anything and I could make money anywhere and I could be okay. Um, and I don't think college is really good for people like that because it's really expensive and takes a lot of time. So to that extent, I feel like I kind of lost four years of time. And thank, you know, thankfully my parents paid for college, but I cost them 200,000 USD. Like it's a lot of money. Um, however, however, those are all the reasons that I wouldn't go to college. I wouldn't do it again. I wouldn't subject my kid to do it necessarily. If you don't know what you explicitly want to be or don't know what you can create or how you can provide for yourself in the world, college is a great place to explore. It's an awesome place to take a bunch of classes, mess up a bunch of times, get bad grades, get good grades, do it all, meet new people. 
Um, so it, it works really well for that type of person. What it did do great for me was play on this idea that you, Nico, or me, anybody, you are the average of your five closest friends. And my high school friends, my five closest high school friends were a whole lot different in worldview than my five closest college friends. So yeah. I met Dylan there. I met Valentine there. My girlfriend, I met at Brown. Um, so my whole kind of averageness changed and elevated in a lot of ways because of the people I met at Brown. That, I mean, I can't, you can't put a price on that. I can't um, knock that for what it was. Um, I think Cliff and Valentine would say the same, especially, yeah. I know Cliff is really good at meeting people. So I'm sure that's like, why he loved Brown so much. Mm -hmm. um, the people you meet from around the world, it's, you can't beat that and you can't pay for it any other way. Yeah, um, like Valentin said, like one, one of his favorite parts was the people, like all the different people he met. Um, and I'm pretty sure Cliff said the same thing. Um, so yeah. Yeah, if you can, so if you're like me, um, you'll have to figure out what boat you fall in when, when who knows what the world will look like in 10 years from, from your age's point of view. Yeah, um, I can't imagine. I can't even <laughs> well, imagine. Everyone's just going on to YouTube and, and TikTok and making that future for themselves at, at a yeah. young age. But I still um, kind of want to yeah, like go to Brown. Yeah, no, certainly, certainly. And you should. Um, it's funny because I also saw this thing online. It's like all the people telling you not to go to college are the people that went to the best colleges. So it's like super contradictory and biased. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, the, the inverse to that narrative is you actually can do a lot of things in the world if you have enough grit and hustle um, that don't necessarily mean you have to spend four years at college and a whole bunch of money, you know? And no one's talking yeah. about that. That you could go start a lawn care business or you can teach yourself to become a barber or be a YouTube succeed. creator or TikTok creator and make wonderful amounts of money and prosperity for yourself. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the forgotten narrative. The narrative is either drop out of high school and do nothing and be nothing. That's one thing our parents think, or go to college and be successful. And there's so much in the middle that no one's talking about. Yeah, I feel like with these TikTokers, if I were like an example, um, a TikToker like Charlie Emilio, um, she's I think she's still doing like school um but I would still like continue doing school like on the side because let's say TikTok fails or she gets canceled like everything's gonna go downhill and then she's gonna have nothing else to do no right. one's gonna want her because she's canceled um everyone's gonna hate her and then yeah she probably spent all her money already so most of right. it and and I should say and, too yeah. I can't I can't disregard the fact that one of the most important things I got from Brown is an email address that says brown.edu. That's it. Um, it's a sad truth about this world, but that has been the key to so many opportunities for me. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't ask me for my grades. They don't ask me for a letter of recommendation. Um, it's like there's all of this status bundled up in an email like brown.edu that gives you so much privilege. Um, yeah. That's a lot of the reason people do these things. And definitely privilege and fortune I've seen from from going to Brown. Yeah. Um, and then back to kind of like the TikToker thing. Um, there are like some TikTokers that I feel like are definitely doing like the right thing. Um, like Josh Richards, he's like investing in companies and stuff like that, which is like what people that have a large following social media should be doing because let's say they also get canceled, they at least have like a backup plan. And like something like that. It's so interesting. I mean, you're spot on. I think it's sad that, I'm, and I'm sure this isn't it's just native to you, but sad that the idea now, the going idea is yeah, be is careful on, well, be careful. No, no, no. Be careful on the internet because if you're not careful, you'll get canceled. Exactly. Um, it's, it's just interesting to hear you because I haven't, I don't know. I don't talk to many people. But it's interesting to hear that like probably around your friends and maybe what your parents say to you, there's this growing fear about getting canceled on the internet. Um, that's a whole different conversation and problem that needs to be solved. A lot of people yeah. maybe deserve that, but 
um, there's some crazy things going on on the internet right now uh, that we shouldn't get into, but it's it's just so interesting to to hear you yeah. say um, that the fear is getting canceled. It's real. And people, I'm not going to name any names, but like <laughs> have lost millions of like dollars just like overnight. Yeah. And s- some people that don't even make money off of YouTube um, that rely on like these sponsorships that drop dropped out, like they have nothing left. Right. Right. So maybe uh, we'll have to do a separate call in five years on the state of cancel culture to see yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where things have gone. But that's for another time. I, I kind of, if I see someone that gets uncanceled, I run into them so bad because mm. I don't know like what their mental health was like, what they were like feeling when they first saw people hate me all of a sudden and how yeah. people start looking at me again like a year later. Yeah, um, yeah. that'd so, be really interesting. But I feel like we haven't, there are people who have been canceled overnight and kind of worked their reputation back up and, mm-hmm. and worked on their character or whatever. And I feel like we, we don't hear from them. They kind of exist in the shadows. So yeah, that's, that's a great point. That'd be that honestly, you probably don't want to do this. Maybe this isn't your angle, but that would be an interesting podcast completely just yeah. tales of cancel culture. Um, that'd be really kind of interesting interviewing people who have gone through that roller coaster of success, 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 everything taken away. Nobody cares about you. Everybody hates you. Everyone's out for you. And then can they slowly sudden, build that reputation right. or not? It depends on, I guess it depends on the magnitude of what they did and uh, what they got canceled for. And I feel like there are some people, also not going to name any names. Um, there's this one person who I 100% think is going to come back. Like, I don't want to say his name. Um, you don't want to say his name, but I'm going to bleep it out. Um, huh? um, right now he's like canceled, but he's 100% going to make a comeback. Like in a year or two years. No, I, I, yeah, I'm with you. Back. I'm with you. And in due time. Um, and we should move on from this. But the last thing I'll say yeah. is... <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a spectrum to these things and we can't penalize everyone at this same extreme spectrum right we can't we can't penalize the most violent of offenders the same as people who did something faux pas like they shouldn't have done that we should yeah. slap them on the wrist and do better next time if we penalize those things on the same part of the spectrum then everything kind of becomes worthless and that's the recoil we're seeing right now but this is not a podcast about cancel culture. I don't exactly. want you bleeping out people. Um, <laughs> so let's let's move on. Can I ask yeah. you a question, Nico? Go ahead. Ask as many as, as you want. Um, oh, okay. I have a meeting. I got to run in like five minutes. But Nico, I need to figure out how is your family so driven? Who are your parents and how do you have other siblings other than Valentine? Yes, I have one other sister. Okay. Is she older, younger? Um, she's two years younger than Valentin. Okay, in the middle. Yeah. Are you all this driven? Where does it come from? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's something to do with our parents, um, uh, because the discipline. Um, but yeah. Are they? Do they? Just tell you to create, 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 and try a bunch of things and make mistakes. Um. I'm curious, do they tell you every day? Do they remind you, you got to do your homework? You got to do your homework. Like where, what kind of guidance do they give you? Yeah, um, they obviously like are really focused on school. Um, they have these schools first and like you and all the other things. Um, so yeah, they always just like, uh, my school has like pending. So do you do your pending that you haven't done? I'm like, yes, obviously I did that. Um, and then they're like, okay, free and if i start getting a bad grace that's kind of like I, I got grounded once for not turning in homework for like okay. making a video um but yeah <laughs> so school is definitely first mm-hmm. if you can crush it there you're able to do all the fun stuff even though school can be fun you're able to do the kind of creative stuff yeah um so long as it doesn't affect your schooling yeah but they also let me do the youtube stuff to like help me support me and stuff like that do they what do they think about oh here we go back to cancel culture but are they <laughs> scared of you putting all this stuff out into the universe or do they kind of understand like there are ways to benefit from from doing these things um yes um 
they both know that they're like big benefits. Um, let's say I have like my podcast as well that can kind of like help me get into a good school and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they all obviously all understand the benefits and they also know, know the bad sides of it too. Right, right. Ah, oh, that's too cool. Okay. Um, Very excited for you before all. Before you go yes. uh, to your meeting very quickly, I have one more question I want to ask you. Um, two very quick questions. Um, why do you think you haven't blown up on YouTube yet? Um, and what is your advice for anyone who wants to start doing YouTube? Okay, let me write those down so I can give you good answers. <laughs> um, not blown up. First of all, the barrier to entry on these things is practically nothing. And the quality, because everyone's got awesome gear, these apps, there are even apps that are like do edits for you to a lot of extent, like the quality, the bar is so high. Um, so it's just, I think two things. One, it's a matter of time. I'm just going to keep creating and keep creating and keep creating. I think it's going to take a lot longer if nobody knows who you are. And I'm okay with that. I'm patient. Um, and then the other thing is someone told me the other day, and now I've said this on like three podcasts in the last two days, but that's okay because it's important. Um, it's not about getting a million views or a million subscribers or a billion views. It's about getting the right view. And yeah. I think if you follow me right now, so much of what you see is Dylan and I getting the right view. That's it. You don't need a lot of subscribers. You don't need a lot of Twitter people. followers. Right. Telling a story to, to draw people to take action. So all of a sudden... Yeah, I've got 650 subscribers on YouTube, same amount of followers on Twitter. Nothing serious by any influencer standards, but we're getting the attention of our biggest idols. Um, they don't care about your subscriber count. They're yeah. the right person. And so, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to create until I can't create no more. Um, advice for any non-YouTubers? Or someone who wants to start doing YouTube. Right. For someone who wants to start doing YouTube, um, pre YouTubers, because I think everyone should, um, Same. I think like we said earlier, like we said earlier, if you haven't been YouTubing for three years, fine, start today. If you are too tired to start today, please just start in another day or in two days. Um, because I'm even at the point where if I do nothing during the day, but I create a little YouTube video about myself, that's two minutes long that day feels like a huge success mm -hmm. to me. You know, if you got on this podcast and you recorded it and it sounds good, success, no matter what else happens, no matter what's blowing up in the world or who's mad at you, like if you did this one thing, great. Um, so I think just start, it doesn't have to be good. It's going to be bad for a long time. Go watch my old videos. They suck. Um, uh, you know, two weeks ago, the thumbnails weren't that good. We're fixing them. Just just keep going and, and stop fearing judgment of others because really nobody cares about you at the end of the day like nobody everyone's just focused on doing their own thing so to not create and not do things because you're scared of what people think of you i think is is naive and so just go at everything you do go full force mm -hmm. and uh yeah. you will be happy you did in the future i have a couple more things to add um on the thing you said about the like gr blowing up and stuff like that there's also stuff like learning the algorithm that like takes a lot of time, like knowing like what keywords to put and just stuff like that. It's just like, oh, like, I don't want to do that. But like, you kind of have to if you want to succeed. But yeah, you do kind of have to, right? And you can you can get caught up in all those technicalities um, and probably blow up faster. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all of those things, the title, the keywords, the algorithm, whatever, that makes it harder for me to create each day. So I'm just not going to worry about it. And I'm going to hope it doesn't matter uh, yeah. by the time I slowly, slowly, slowly create an audience, um, an audience that like, I think really cares about what we're doing. You're doing uh, it anyways. Right. And so I think a lot of people get paralyzed by all the things you could do or you have to do right, or you need to beat the algorithm or the first 10 seconds have to be like this. And the next 30 have to be like this for no one actually knows what works. The only way to find out is to just do a lot of stuff fast. Yeah. That's my, my belief at least. And like, you're not like focusing on keywords and you're going like seven subscribers a day, um, seven subscribers like a week, like one a day. Yeah. Great. 
great, you know, and, and it'll snowball. Uh, if I can grow seven a day, that's 30 a month. Maybe the next month we'll do 60 and the next month we'll do never month we got bigger and, then, and bigger uh, and bigger. Exactly. So long as you keep just being consistent, just exactly. do it. Exactly. Um, gives give people something to show up for, you know, that, mm-hmm. and, uh, it's slow and you gotta be patient and not get discouraged. Um, but that kind of slowness is what weeds out a lot of the impatient people from those that we do see and uh, end up blowing up and, and making it. Yeah. I don't want to hold you for much longer because you have a meeting. Um, but when are you coming back to Mexico? <laughs> oh, I know. Um, there is a chance I mean, we want to go to the West coast of Mexico to scuba dive, I think in like Baja, what's it called about Baja, California, sir, or whatever. Um, maybe in July Cancun or rather we were in Playa del Carmen. Um, amazing, amazing. So Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how close it was. Beautiful. So good. (laughs) Marquesitas. Um, so hopefully we'll be back soon. Um, it's a couple of trips before then, but hope to be back. Uh, great um so thank you so much Henry for coming on the podcast um this really means a lot um can't wait to have you back on the podcast when you have 100 million subscribers on your huge youtuber um but yeah same thank to you, you so Nico. much same to you thank you so much for coming on and yeah I'll see you next episode of the Nico cast